Have you ever wanted to make your own version of Windows? Maybe you don't trust custom operating systems, too lazy to install Windows LTSC, or you're tech savvy and you want to do things yourself, then you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own custom Windows. So yeah, let's get into it. First of all, we're going to need a Windows 11 or Windows 10 ISO. So I've gone ahead and downloaded one right here. It's Windows 11 22H2. If you don't know how to get that, then just go on your web browser of choice, Windows. Windows 11 ISO and it should be the first thing that comes up here as you can see we've got Windows 11 here now they used to not allow you to directly download the ISO from them however now they actually let you so yeah you just select your downloads Windows 11 multi edition is coming straight from Microsoft servers it's taking me about three minutes right so the next thing that we need is a program called NT Lite so I'll leave a link to it in the description down below but yeah it is a paid for software but you can download a free version of it and the free version is honestly just as good. It's got everything you need. I personally bought this, so I'm going to be using the premium version of this. But yeah, you just go ahead and go to downloads here and you can download the free version and it allows you to do most things, to be honest. But yeah, it's a really good program. I really do like it and I'm glad I bought it, honestly, support the developer and I'll show you guys everything you need to do. So once you've got the ISO and you've got NT Lite, your next up need WinRAR or 7-Zip. I'm sure you guys have that already. So what we need to do is right click on our ISO. I'm going to open it with WinRAR and then just make a new folder on your desktop. I'm just going to call it Notro OS. And then basically just extract all the contents of the ISO into this folder, basically. Now what we need to do is open up NT Lite. So what you need to do is go to the top left here, go to add image folder, and then open up your folder. In my case, it was Notro OS. And as you can see here, we have all the different instances of Windows 11. Now I'm going to go for Windows 11 Pro because it's probably the best version, honestly. Just double click on it. After this, we can actually delete all the other versions out of this ISO. So it just only installs Windows 11 Pro. Wait for it. Leave it to do its thing. Right. So our Windows 11 Pro is loaded. So as you can see on the left here, we have the various different categories of the operating system. So we've got components, features, settings. Now components, you've got to be pretty careful when you're messing with it. It even comes up with a warning message here. So yeah, just read that and press OK to proceed. And then we've got stuff like features, settings, services, extra services, we can also install drivers as well. So it actually scans your computer here and it shows all the stuff that I've got plugged into my computer. We can actually slipstream in drivers from my actual hardware. So if I was reinstalling this on my computer, I wouldn't have to do any Windows updates because all the drivers would be in the ISO, which is pretty cool. We've then got the registry here, which is pretty much laid out just like RegEdit is on your Windows system. And then we've got post setup, which is actually pretty cool. You can actually drag and drop in installers into here and it'll actually open open and install these applications for you when you first install your operating system. So with custom operating systems, it's better off just to focus on the ground and work your way up. Right, anyway, so uh, yeah, components. I'd leave drivers, hardware support you can leave as well localization that's just fonts and stuff to be honest i'll just leave all of this because this is all the core features of windows only go messing with this if you really know what you're doing anyway so now we've got some stuff here remoting and privacy now this is the stuff that you can enable and disable now the good thing about nt light is it actually gives you a little description here so you just hover over something go here yeah it basically just tells you what it is which is really useful again i'm pretty much just going to leave all of this but we will go into windows apps this is all the pre-installed apps that come with with Windows 11. Now you do have to forgive me, I'm going to have to zoom in quite a lot in this video because some of the options are very kind of small and tiny and tedious. So yeah, we've got apps here. So basically what you can do is if I tick all of these, it will tick obviously every single app, which we don't want. We don't want the pre-installed bloatware, thank you. So just go ahead and uncheck the things that you don't want. Don't want Bing News, Bing Weather, Clipchamp. We'll keep the gaming stuff, Dicky Notes. We'll keep the net stuff. You get the idea basically. Just go through all of this, uncheck what you don't want and leave what you want tick. So in this components is where most of the bloatware kind of lies. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and leave the rest of it. I'm going to uncheck OneDrive because OneDrive is really annoying that it comes pre-installed. Anyway, system apps here. Again, just uncheck things that you don't want. You've got to be a little bit more careful in this one because if you disable something here, it might break something else and vice versa. So just kind of see what you're doing here. Definitely uncheck Microsoft Edge. And yeah, the rest, like I said, it's personal preference. You might even like Edge. I saw some comments in my last video, people saying, what's wrong with Edge? To be honest, it's not a bad browser. I just hate how it, they just shove it down your throat. It's really annoying. And that is components ticked right off. So next up, we can go into features. 
features. Now features is, yeah, there, there isn't actually that much here. So remember, tick means it's enabled. And if it's not ticked, it means it's removing, as you can see here on the right. I leave this pretty much on the standard settings here. In fact, I might have even loaded in my custom settings. So if you want to copy this, then feel free to. Same with my apps as well, if you want to copy that. What's legacy components? Okay, we don't need that. Hyper-V, you can have that if you want. Yeah, there is quite a lot of stuff in here that's actually unchecked, which is part of Windows, which is pretty cool. Like, I didn't even know that we had device lockdown in Windows, but apparently we do. So if you want, you can enable that, I suppose. So next up, up, we have got settings. So settings is a difficult one really because again it's all personal preference. So desktop settings is what I would change personally. So you can have the accent color on inactive title bars. You can actually select what color you want it to be. So just go on this little drop down menu and you can actually select which accent color you want on Windows. No activation needed and it'll do this by default because that's what we're kind of dialing into the ISO here. Dark theme for all apps, definitely have that enabled. Login screen, accent color. Yeah, like I said, this is all kind of personal preference really. So to enable and disable things, you pretty much just go to this drop down arrow and select either enabled, disabled or default basically. Alternatively, I think you can use the arrow keys as well. So you can do that as well. Just click down and up. Then we've got Explorer. And yeah, these are just like Windows settings basically. So you can have balloon tips, which is still included in Windows 11. I believe Rev iOS actually have this enabled. It's pretty cool that they're still in. Last time I saw balloon tips, it was like Windows 7. So yeah, and then we've got autoplay, cache thumbnails, quick access. You can enable and disable that if you don't like it. You can make the taskbar show on all monitors. You can have the taskbar with small icons, sharing wizards, show empty drives, show hidden files and folders and drives, which personally I would have enabled. It's one of those things that I always enable anyway after. So it'd be good if that's by default included. And yeah, that's pretty much it really. Just go through all of these. It does take some time. Like I said, you've got to have time on your hands to do this. Although if you are too lazy, I'm, mm, I don't know. Should I include my ISO in the description? It'll just be a magnet link. So if you know what you're doing, just BitTorrent client of choice and you might be able to download it. I don't know. I'm not sure if I should distribute it or not. Then we've got network. I just leave that on the default. OneDrive, disabling that, of course. And then we've got power control, which is pretty interesting. So you can change the hibernation size in the RAM, paging file, all of this good stuff. Now, major one here, privacy settings. So this is kind of the main reason we're doing all of this because there is so many privacy questions on Windows and it's kind of ridiculous. First one, allow telemetry. There's no way to disable it, just basic. Put it on that. Allow location, disabled. You might want this, but I personally disable it because why should my computer know my location? Experimentation, disabled. Experience improvement program for Nvidia. No, thank you. Yeah, you get the gist of it basically but there is so many privacy settings in Windows. So yeah, definitely go through all of these and make sure you're 100% with all of them. Collect contacts to let Windows and Cantana better understand you, no. Yeah, then there's some like personal preference ones like let apps access and send email. You might want that, so I just leave it on default. But yeah, you get the idea. I leave this personally all on default. Yeah, you can go pretty hard if you want on these privacy settings. You can copy my settings or you can be a bit more strict. So next up we've got system. I just leave this all on default, TCIP, Again, default. You know what you're doing, you might be able to uh, do something in here, but I personally don't. So yeah, user account control, I just leave that on default. And then we just got Windows, again, default. So yeah, that is it for settings. Now we're on to services. Now services are, again, something I tend to just leave. You can copy my settings if you want. I've just gone through all of them pretty much off camera and disabled the ones I don't want. The other great thing about NT Lite is you can actually load other people's settings. So for example, Chris Titus, when he did a video on NT Lite, he promoted this guy who actually had a pre-made settings list for NT Lite. So if you want to load someone else's settings for NT Lite, just go back to source here, go to preset and then press load. And then yeah, you can pretty much select someone else's settings. So for example, I've got Gamer OS Windows 11 here, which I actually got from the Chris Titus video. Really good settings, but personally I tweak a lot of them myself. So yeah, it'd be good to start off with someone else's settings kind of like as a little base and then just work off of that. Right, where were we? Okay, well, I think we were on services before. So yeah, I just kind of leave this all really. Um, you can copy what I've done, but I'm pretty sure I've just left it all on the default. I don't know why I've got the Microsoft Edge update service that's going. So yeah, 
like always just go on the drop down disable it that is pretty much it really for this then we've got extra services here as well i personally just leave this alone i don't really like messing with windows services then we've got updates as well like i said you can slip stream in the latest windows updates through here as well we've got drivers like i said here all of the drivers in your computer if you want to install additional drivers through here just drag and drop it in here and it will install them after the install which is really good got registry i tend to just leave this alone and then we've got some interesting stuff here called unattended and post setup so unattended is pretty much all of your windows settings so when you first load up your iso it'll ask you for your language your keyboard layout all that stuff we don't need to do any of that we can actually do that through this unattended tab here so yeah let's work from top to bottom here so first of all i just leave this all here so first of all windows language united kingdom system local english gb i've got my time zone here now your time zone might not be the same as mine your language might not even be the same as mine i'm pretty sure there's there's only like one version of English, but turns out this loads. Look at this. Oh, this is crazy. But yeah, anyway, I've personally got the Great Britain version. Time zone, you can change that through here as well. Yeah, so it's just a nice little scroll down list here. Select your time zone and you don't have to do it when you set up Windows 11 for the first time, which is good. Next up, I've got automatic login. So in order to do this, you need to set up a user account. Don't worry, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just press this button here, add local account, type in the group, type in a username, a password, if you want that so once you've added your local account set it all up here just go ahead and select it here i personally just made an admin account with no passwords with administrator privileges and then you just go ahead and select the user here and then automatic login will log that user in straight away now now we have got the out of box experience so this is like the pre-install stuff so we can skip the eula page so i've put that to true skip local account setup that's true now make sure you've added your own account because if you don't then it's going to freak out so yeah skip local account setup i've got that enabled as true because i've created an admin account here all set up and ready to go in fact i think it'll even warn you if you don't have an account it will tell you that if you skip local account setup it's going to mess something up skip online account creation step definitely got that on true skip get going fast skip windows welcome skip windows welcome center yeah that's pretty much it really and then user accounts obviously i've got my admin account that i've set up and that's all good there now next up another personal preference one what do you want your computer to be called i've personally put notro os product key activation just leave that on blank registered organization blank registered owner just put your name or whatever and then yeah now we have got the actual windows language and keyboard layout settings so we've got input local i've gone with the united kingdom I haven't gone with extended just united kingdom again personal preference you might have a different keyboard to me use a local again gb and that's pretty much it so this will pretty much skip the whole out of box experience install it'll just it'll just ask you what drive you want to install select the drive install boom and then it should automatically log you in to the admin account that you created or whatever account local account you've set up you've skipped local account you skip microsoft account so it's going to be a very very fast install you just select your drive boom you're in and then we've got post setup now post setup is pretty good so what i personally like to do is i like to throw the firefox installer into there so yeah, just download Firefox as normal from their website or whatever browser you use, Brave or Chrome or whatever. So then yeah, just download the Firefox installer and then simply just drag and drop that into the post setup. So what that will do when it says, oh, just a minute, don't turn off your PC or whatever, it will install Firefox and you'll have Firefox ready to go on your desktop, which is really good. You can also put registry things in here as well, like batch files and that kind of thing. So I'm going to put in the minimal processes reg into here. Again, simply just drag and drop it. I can't remember where I got this from. I think it was from Tech Yes City, but I'll leave a link to it in the description down below if you want to put this in your post setup. We've got the Firefox installer, like I said. I'm going to put Sage Thumbs in here as well because I hate not being able to see thumbnails. So we're going to install that post setup. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uninstall Microsoft Edge. Even though we disabled it with all the settings before, 
before, it still always finds a way to sneak its way in and it's so annoying. I think it's because I connect to the internet and it just grabs it. But if we put in the post setup, a Microsoft Edge uninstaller batch file, it'll run that and then we'll just have Firefox on our windows, which is what I like to see. So yeah, if you want to get this, I'll leave a link to it in the description and then go ahead and extract it somewhere. I'm just going to extract it to my desktop and then yeah, just drag and drop this batch file into there. And yeah, that will pretty much remove Edge, install Firefox and we'll be good. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I've pretty much done everything. Most of it I've already done off camera anyway. Like I said, I'll probably leave my configs in the description down below for you guys to download. And yeah, I've put all my post setup things in here as well. So the next thing we need to do before we start compiling our ISO is we need to disable our antivirus. That includes tamper protection and all of the various settings. I've disabled Windows Defender, so I don't even have an antivirus right now. So yeah, make sure you disable all of that because Windows really don't like you making your own custom operating system. And yeah, lots of the stuff that it's going to be doing is using core Windows features itself. And yeah, it's going to think you're doing something really bad. So just turn it all off, compile your ISO, and then you can turn it all back on after. So what I'm going to select is save the image and trim additions. So that will remove every single version apart from Windows 11 Pro, which is the one that we modified. This is going to really help reduce our file size of the ISO. So that's going to be really good. Remove non-essential additions. Again, removing every single thing apart from the loaded Windows 11 Pro. Image format. I'm just going to have it on standard. You can do high compression, but I wouldn't really recommend it. So I'm just going to go with the standards. And then, yeah, it's pretty much just going to go through every single thing, updates, features, components, drivers, all the stuff that we've been through and it's going to apply all of our settings that we've selected, which is really good. And then yeah, just select create ISO and yeah, you can name it. I'm just going to call it Notro OS like that. And then you can save it to your desktop. So then on the right here, this is the little timeline. This is how it's going to do things. So it's going to load up Windows 11 Pro, load up our configured settings, services, automated unattended stuff, post setup stuff, save the changes to the image, trim all the non-essential images that we haven't used and we don't want, optimize the file structure, backup log and preset on source, create the ISO to your desktop or wherever you've saved it and it's going to be called Notro OS. So I really like the layout of this, it's really logical and really nice so you can see everything that it's going to do and then yeah just press process and then press yes and then yeah you'll just see it working its way through this list basically so it's already done services, settings, unattended and post setup, it's just saving the changes to the image. This might take a while depending on your computer, it does take me quite a little while so just go ahead grab some drinks or snacks or whatever sit back relax and i'll be back once our iso is created right so after a bit of compiling we have finally got notro os iso let's go so yeah this is the compiled iso that took quite a while but yeah it's finally done it's finally complete and i've also got some other isos here so this is the original windows 11. if we go ahead and look at the properties of this as you can see it is 5.17 gigabytes and if we compare that to our notro os iso 4.73 so not that much in reduction but yeah that is pretty good going considering all of the stuff that we've done to notro os and I've also got Tech Yes City's Power Edition ISO as well, which I've copied a lot of the settings from as well. They're really good. And then we've got my OS, which is a pretty solid ISO, which I'm personally running now on my system. Now, when it comes to making your own OS, please, once you've done your NT Lite and got the ISO, don't put it on a USB and boot straight off it on your computer. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be problems. I've had to go through like five different versions just to get a bootable ISO, to be honest. So what I'd recommend is using a virtual machine. So the VM that I personally use is VirtualBox, but you can use VMware tools or whatever they call it. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and download VirtualBox. Just go ahead and install that. By the way, do you guys like my theme on Windows? I've been messing around with Rectify 11 and Revi iOS and start 11 and I've got a pretty clean layout if I do say so myself. I'm trying to keep all my crap off my desktop but it's kind of hard but all my stuff is all nicely categorized here. I love it. It's really nice. It reminds me a lot of my Mac like the file explorers now like translucent. It's just so good. If you want to see a video on how I customized my Windows 11 then definitely let me know in the comments down below. Right we have got VirtualBox. We're going to go ahead and make a new virtual machine here and then we're going to select our ISO image. We'll skip unattended installation. We'll keep the processors on two, four gigs of RAM. You know, it's fine just to test out a operating system, 80 gigabyte hard drive. That's more than enough. And yeah, let's power up 
Notro OS and test it out. So yeah, once you're confident with your OS and it's all good to go, then I'd recommend installing it on the USB and installing it on your system. So straight away, we've got no pre-setup install questions or settings or anything like that. Straight away, setup is starting and boom, here we go. So all it's asking is where do you want to install Windows? So select your drive, press next. So yeah, I'll be back when we get to the setup, I guess. Right, so it's getting ready and look at this. Firefox is being installed. Now that's something you don't see every day. So it's installing Firefox browser for us, which is brilliant. Right, I'm guessing this next thing is Sage Thumbs. And here we go. Admin, logged us in straight away. And this is Notro OS, everybody. Come on. Come on, the suspense is killing me. Hey, Notro OS. So, bloatware, as you can see, TikTok has snuck its way on there. Probably because I'm connected to the internet, but otherwise, pretty clean. You know, maybe I like Solitaire and WhatsApp. That might be useful. Same with Spotify. Office we can get rid of. Don't really want that. But it looks all right, to be honest. We go to all apps here. Yeah, I think what's happened is when I was showing you guys the list, I think I may have ticked them all by accident, which is a bit annoying. And we've got Microsoft Edge. How's that happened? Background processes, are they any good? 87, not bad. That is pretty good, actually, for Windows 11. So, yeah, we've managed to reduce them, but in the process, we've um, kind of messed up things. We've, how have we still got OneDrive? This is the one thing that I'll just never understand. So, yeah, like I said, there will be mistakes. In my case, there is mistakes with the bloatware, but the processes are pretty low. Our local account worked. Our setup was pretty easy. It just flew through that. We've got Edge. It's just so difficult to get rid of, but we've installed Firefox, so we don't even need to use Edge, which is good. So yeah, this is pretty much just going to outline what you can do with NT Lite. Not very successful here, but I will show you guys my ISO. Right, so we're just loading up my ISO. So I use this on my personal computer. I'm running it literally right now, my version of Windows 11, and it's been really good. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you first set it up. And here it is. So this is what it looks like when you first load it up. So as you can see, we've got Windows Search. But yeah, we've got apps use dark theme. So we've got a nice dark file explorer here. And then we've got obviously our taskbar and everything moved over to the left hand side here, which I don't know why I personally have it in the middle now. But yeah, if we go into our task manager here, we've got 100 processes, which is a little bit on the high side. But we can always use the Chris Titus tool to halve them. We've got a classic right click menu, which is really good. And it's also dark themed as well. We've managed to finally kill Microsoft Edge, which I'm really happy that I managed to do. So if we go into the start menu here, yeah. It's the thing of nightmares, but they're only shortcuts. And I guess if I disconnect from the internet, these wouldn't install. So we can just right click uninstall all these shortcuts. But yeah, I'm not going to bore you with that. We've got Microsoft Store, which I've included. Xbox, obviously we need for the Minecraft launcher and that kind of thing. If we go into all apps here, though, it's pretty minimal. We've got pretty much nothing here. All the kind of essentials you need, really. I personally use snipping tools, so I keep that. Notepad's good. Microsoft Store. Get started, I don't think you can get rid of. And then calculator cameras, all pretty much standard. We've obviously got the dark theme enabled by default. That's pretty much what I've managed to achieve by messing around with NT Light. It would be nice if there was an option to change the desktop background. That would be really cool. Imagine like a Notro OS uh, desktop wallpaper. I don't think you could do that through NT Light. You'd probably have to use another tool. But yeah, let me know your experiences of NT Light and what you've managed to achieve in the comments down below. I probably won't leave the ISO of this, but I might leave the settings in the description if you want to go ahead and load them on your NT Lite and pretty much just build what I've got here. Like I said, it's pretty stable. I run this now on my computer and it runs completely fine. Just got to get rid of these shortcuts here run the Chris Titus tool and yeah, you're good. You can't go wrong with it. It's really solid. So yeah, that's going to be the video guys. It's been a long one, but I hope you guys got all the information you wanted out of it. And yeah, I'm going to continue messing around with operating systems as usual. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video.